Well, hello once again. We have gathered uh, to look once again into God's Word and perhaps see what He might be trying to say to us through His Word and through His Spirit. Uh, earlier, uh, we had spoken of the fact that we come seeking God's wisdom and uh, His His guidance and also His strength. Uh, we had spoken earlier in... Uh, times past that how God speaks to us through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church. This particular time, <clears throat> uh, it, I had uh, been seeking to f figure out what God wanted me to say. And also, uh, when we're doing experience in God, Bl Mr. Blackaby used to say that God no longer spoke in, in dreams but he mostly spoke in this day and time through uh, through the Bible. But for this, for this time, I was having somewhat of a struggle figuring out exactly what I thought he might want me to, to say. In fact, the night before time to do the video, Brenda asked me, did I have my uh, thing ready of what I would say? And I only gave her a halfway answer because I wasn't really clear. But as I went on to bed, I was really tired, went, went dead asleep. But at 4 o'clock in the morning, something popped in my head. I don't know whether you would call it a dream or not, but I woke right up. And somehow it was clear the topic that I would probably uh, speak on. And it came to me somewhat like this. I felt like I was in the presence of a couple of people and they were having a conversation and one person was asking the other, why did they go so far away to get things done when they could actually get it done right in the area where they were? Uh, it could have been a business transaction or it could have been, uh, why do you drive so far to go to church when there's one right close to you? And the answer that that person gave was, it's because of the atmosphere of where I go. There seems to be a certain feeling or attitude that is very different in some places where the people are just a lot more positive and uh, they are just a pleasure to be with. And it's such a difference, you almost feel like you're breathing in different air when you get into that kind of situation. So... I began to think about the subject of our attitude and the atmosphere that we might create when we are with other people. Are we really drawing them toward uh, our church or toward God? So I'd like to read a little bit this morning about uh, attitudes. This might be a repeat. I don't know if I read this before or not. Possibly could have, but it comes from a little book called Great Attitudes. And it goes like this. This may shock you, but I believe the single most decision I can make on a day-to-day -day basis is my choice of attitude. It is more important than my past, my education, my bankroll, my successes or failures, fame or pain, what other people think of me or say about me, my circumstances or my position. Attitude keeps me going or cripples my progress. It alone fuels my fire or assaults my hope. When my attitudes are right, there's no barrier too high, no valley too deep, no dream too extreme, no challenge too great for me. Let me pause right here and ask you about your attitude. How is it? Perhaps it's good right now, but what about tomorrow morning when you punch in the time clock? Or what about the end of the day tomorrow evening? How will your eight to ten hours have been? As you work shoulder to shoulder with people in your shop, in your office, or among the sales force where you are employed, or in the administrative pool, what kind of attitude will you have? The dictionary on my desk defines attitude as a manner of acting, feeling, or thinking that shows one's disposition opinion, mental set. That means that how we think determines how we respond to others. My attitude is a direct reflection of what I think. 
which in turn affects how I respond to others. In a little letter Paul wrote to the Christians in Philippi, he didn't mince words when it came to attitudes. Although a fairly peaceful and happy flock, the Philippians had a few personality skirmishes. Can you imagine that? That could have derailed them and hindered their momentum. Knowing how counterproductive that would be, he came right to the point, their attitudes. If therefore there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one person, one purpose. And that's from Philippians 2, verses 1 and 2. What does all this mean? Well, let's go back and take a look. There's encouragement in the person of Christ. There is love. There is also plenty of fellowship of the Spirit for the Christian to enjoy. Likewise, affection and compassion. Heaven is full and running over with these things, even though earth is pretty barren at times. So Paul pleads for us to tap into that positive, encouraging storehouse. How? By being of the same mind. He's telling us to take charge of our own minds, clearly a command. We Christians have the God-given ability to put our minds on this, those things that build up, strengthen, encourage, and help ourselves and others. Do that, commands the Lord. As your friend, let me urge you to take charge of your mind and emotions today. Let your mind feast on nutritious food for a change. Refuse to grumble and criticize. Reject those alien thoughts that make you a petty, bitter person. Let your life yield a sweet, winsome melody that this old world needs so desperately. Yes, you can, if you will. And so he makes a very clear point of how important our attitudes are. And I would like to read a little, little further as you begin to think about what kind of uh, atmosphere you might be creating when you uh, speak with other people, uh, I'd like to read this little saying. Might be well worth memorizing. Joyous people have the greatest opportunity to impact others positively. And they rarely leave a room the same way they found it. I find that to be rather fascinating. They rarely leave a room the same way they found it. You might ask yourself, when you leave a room, what kind of atmosphere, what kind of attitude are you leaving behind? Further on, concerning attitudes and the attitude that we might be carrying, I'd like to read a little section from Turning Points. In the second century AD, when the early church was growing in size and influence, the Roman Emperor Hadrian sent a man named Orestes to gather information about the people known as Christians. At that time, they were known as Little Christ or Christ Ones. Aristotle's report contained mixed pieces of evidence, but one has stood the test of time. Behold how they love one another. That piece of evidence, along with Jesus' timeless words in John 13, 35, by this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. It inspired a priest named Peter Skolders to write what became one of the most popular worship songs of the 1960s, Jesus People Moment Movement, they'll know we are Christians. The refrain of that hymn says, and they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. The Bible says God is love, and Jesus is the image of the invisible God which means Jesus is love too. If we're going to represent Christ in the world, 
so that all will know him. We have to be people who love. People of faith, yes. Of hope, yes. But Paul wrote that most importantly, we are to be people of love. And that's from 1 Corinthians 13. And then God loved humanity so much that he gave his only son to save us. Mm. The greatest expression of love that can ever be. So I'd, leave, I'd like to leave you with this question in your mind. What kind of attitude, what kind of atmosphere do you create as a person when you are communicating with the people that you are in touch with every day? With that said, let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come confessing that we always realize that we are sinful people and we are so grateful for your grace and mercy for forgiveness. Well, we come praying, Lord, that uh, we will focus on becoming the kind of people, presenting the kind of attitudes and thoughts that will draw others to you. And we pray that we will be filled by your spirit with the love that will impress others to be drawn not only to us, but more importantly to you. For we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.